Hey YouTube, I'm Sergeant Indy. Welcome back to my turn-based strategy tutorial for Game Maker Studio. This video, we're going to go a bit off topic from what I said we do at the end of the last video because we're going bug hunting. Demo TKS pointed out a couple game-breaking bugs within the code, but they're interesting bugs, so I figured it'd be a good exercise to go through my bug hunting process. We're going to trigger the bug, examine the error report, then I'll step through a thought process on hunting the bug, explain what the problem is, and then code a solution. We'll also take a look at Demo's bug reporting because it was well done and gave me all the information I needed to find a solution. In the process of this video, we'll be running the game a few times to scare up some bug reports. If the error reporter makes your computer grumpy, you don't have to follow along for that part. You can just watch me do it and follow along when it comes time to do some code. If your line spacing is different than mine, you might get bug reports from different line numbers, but the code should be similar enough. We've already got the game up and running, ready to find our first bug, so let's get started. What we're going to do is I'm going to click on this uh, end turn button. And I'm going to hit escape. Great, that works just like it should. Now I'm going to hit escape, and I'm going to click the button. That works fine. And escape again. And now I'm going to hit escape, and then I'm going to hit the button's hotkey, X. And we've got a bug. Big error. So let's break this down. This first line is telling us it's been handed an instance name for an instance that doesn't exist. That's what this is. Unable to find any instances for object 100951, name undefined. And then it says the problem is right here. GML script, perform button. So that's our perform button script. Line 8, switch button dot title. That's where the error was thrown from. We have a bit more information to go on because this line of code was called from here. So our cursor's step normal event. And a step normal event, that's the regular step event. Not begin step, not end step. Step normal. At line 40, and it called perform buttons, O cursor, selected actor, ID. So what does all of this mean? Well, it means that at some point, our cursor object handed perform buttons the name of an instance that doesn't exist. Now, this is kind of an obscure error. Uh, we'll see eventually that none of this information in this error report has given us a, anything directly related to the bug. So I'm going to board out of here and let's talk about that. Let's go through this whole thing. So we're going to head into uh, your button subfolder of your scripts folder. We're going to go into perform buttons. Take a look at line 8. So we've got switch, button, dot, title. That's what broke. Now when you're looking for bug reports, it's a good idea to check things that are above. I mean, well, obviously don't check anything below because this code never got a chance to run. But things before could cause problems leading up to this. And in this case, all we've got is button equals argument 1. And argument one equals the instance ID of the button to be performed. So nothing's wrong in here. This all looks fine. Okay, that narrows things down considerably. We know that the variable button is supposed to hold the ID of one of our button objects. Simple. In the case of our error, it's trying to access the ID of a button that doesn't exist, so it can't execute. So that's the problem. We know what our problem is, and we know that our problem isn't here. And now we need to figure out why we have this problem. So let's green check out of here. We'll go into our cursor, step event, and let's head down to line 40 right here. And it's this line of code, which is performed in this block. So with O button, if keyboard check pressed ORD hotkey, perform buttons. Okay, so the cursor is lining up all the buttons that exist, and it's asking them, hey, was your hotkey pressed? And if it was, it's doing perform buttons. So this is pretty straightforward. It's checking all the buttons that exist. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. So it doesn't have any unnecessary frills, no weird steps. It's fine. It's about as straightforward as it can be. So if line 8 of perform buttons isn't the problem, and line 40 of our cursor step event isn't the problem, then how do we figure out what's going on here? How do we fix the bug? Well. We do have more information to go on. We know that it works fine unless we hit the escape key before we press the button. If we hit the escape key 
While buttons exist, clicking on them works fine, but hitting the hotkey throws an error. So that gives us a couple of leads to try to work on to try to track this thing down. Let's check the left click first. That's going to be further down. For me, it's around, yeah, line 75 for me. But it should be right above the right click. So it's one of the last blocks of code we've got. Okay, so we're checking the left click. If we have a selected actor, if we have a hover button, we do this. And otherwise, well, yeah, if instance place XY confirm button, we perform the action and then we destroy the confirm button. This is all really straightforward too. So that narrows things down even more. Let's check out the escape key functionality. That's the blo block of code uh, right above where we're at now. So if keyboard check pressed, VK escape right here. So we fiddle with our selected actor state. We destroy the confirm button. We destroy the confirm box in this block. That's fine. Then we do wipe nodes. Cool. Well, then we do movement range. And here's the problem right here, movement range. Some of you probably remember that at the end of movement range, we create the buttons. So here's what's going on. The game starts, then it goes through all the turns until it gets to one of our player's characters, and then it does movement range and creates buttons. Uh, in the case of when I started the video, it was, I think it was Rizzo, and there were four buttons. Creates all four of them. Great. Then we hit the escape key. It calls this, which calls movement range, and it creates more buttons. They're right in exactly the same place, right on top of the other buttons, essentially. Uh, you know, I'm I'm gonna demonstrate. I'm gonna let's I'm gonna green check out of here. You guys don't have to follow along with this. This is some throwaway debug functionality. I'm gonna go into our draw event and I'm gonna add a few lines of code, and we're gonna have a head count of all the buttons that exist in the game. So I'm gonna let's draw rectangle color. And I want the British U because I want to see where it's at. We're just going to go about 300. It's not quite the center of the screen, close enough. Zero right up at top. And we'll go to 350. That's way more than we need. 16. C underscore black. 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 I just got a new keyboard, so I'm going to have even more trouble typing now than I normally do. We'll set up a quick variable, call it button count that's good enough for me and let's do with oh button no button and then we'll other dot button count plus equals one so all the buttons that exist will increment that number up great and then we want uh, draw text start at 300 and zero, and we'll do string button count. Uh, what's wrong with you? Ah, I'm missing a paren. Okay. Great. Now I'm going to run it again. That should work, I hope. I hope I didn't add more bugs to a game we're already looking for bugs. Okay, so we've got four buttons. One, two, three, four. Looks great to me. I'm going to hit escape. Well, now we have eight buttons. Twelve. 16, 20, 24, 28, 32. That's a lot of buttons. So now when I hit this X hotkey, boop, we've got an error. Okay, what's this mean? It means we have all those buttons laid on top of each other. 32 of them, for example, like I just did. Then when we hit a hotkey, what's happening is that cursor is essentially making a list. Let's go back in and look at... Uh, Line 40 again. Line 40 right here. When it does this with O button, what cursor's doing is essentially making a list of every button that exists. And then it's going through all of this, one at a time, to check if their hotkey is pressed. Since we now have a bunch of identical buttons that share the same hotkeys, it's attempting to perform buttons with all of them in turn. Now, if we go check perform buttons, let's pop that open real quick. What it does is it wipes the buttons when it runs the end turn or any of them, really. They kill all of the other buttons. So our cursor's got this big, long list. It gets to the first one. Oh, he pressed X. Cool. Let's uh, perform buttons. And then that 
kills all the buttons and then it says keeps going is oh i've got a id of another one that's trying to perform buttons it's and it's causing of like a train wreck in our code is what's going on that's a problem we want it gone there's a few solutions i don't want to mess with line 40 here because it's pretty clean and efficient so let's fix the escape key clause that should be a bit further down ah, right here so right when we wipe the nodes let's also wipe buttons so wipe buttons wipe nodes we'll do movement range again great all right now let's test it out the green check out of here and here run the game i'll hit the escape key a few times we can see that the uh button count up here that's not going up great working fine i'll hit the x hot key working great that's not our only bug though there's two more to go one that already existed within the code and another bug that our fix just caused that's right my fix caused another bug that happens a lot in game programming specifically game programming like this where you have so many pieces of data and variables interacting with one another to make this term-based strategy kind of stuff work, you get fixes cause bugs pretty often. So let's do that one first. I'm going to hover over this button right here. And we've got our cool pop-up text that we programmed a couple videos ago. One video ago. It's, it's been a while. I'm going to hit escape now. I said I'm going to hit escape now. Why isn't it causing the bug? Oh, I know why it's not causing the bug. Green check out of here. Let's go look at white buttons. That's why it didn't cause the bug. Okay, well, that's the solution. So initially I had planned that I was just going to put with O button right where I did the white buttons function before and it caused the bug because we weren't resetting the hover button. Let's, let's do that. I think that's a better teaching exercise. I spontaneously decided to do white buttons again, went off script. Let's do the proper way because this is also an interesting bug and we should talk about it too. So with O button instance destroy. Okay, so my fix didn't cause a bug. I went back and I retroactively caused a bug and we'll fix it by doing white buttons instead of the other solution that I was going to do. Because it's much more efficient. We've already got a script that exists that does that. So I'm hovering over this button. Got our cool pop-up text, our end turn, finished turn of current character stuff. I'm going to hit escape. Now we have a bug. Great, good. Now we have a bug. I can talk about a bug. Uh, it's much simpler than the last one, our bug report. We've only got a couple of lines. We've got the same basic first line. It can't find this thing. It's trying to access an instance that no longer exists. And the error is coming from our cursor's draw event. Temp title equals hover button dot title. So same thing. We're passing an instance name, its ID, in the hover button variable. And then when we go to try to access that button's data, we find out it doesn't exist. A lot simpler than the last one. I've talked before about how everything in Game Maker Studio follows a very stringent order. Every step it goes through, every type of event in order. It can't really perfectly outline exactly how Game Maker's going to do things because, like, if you create an object during another object step event, it's going to do its create events and its activation triggers stuff. So it depends on how you code your game, but definitely Game Maker's going to go begin step, step, end step, and then it moves on to the various draw events. And I'm not too certain on what order the draw events go in because I tend to just old school it and just use a regular draw event because I haven't gotten used to the new, actually I haven't even tried the new draw UI yet. I probably should fiddle around with that just to get used to it. So what's going on here is that our cursor step event, and let's go, let's go look at that in the code itself. So our cursor, take a look at the step event. Where does it do it? Right here. So if instance place X, Y, O button. So we're hovering over a button we do our little button timer thing for our pop-up text. 
and we set our hover button variable to instance place x, y, o button. Great. Now later on, just a couple lines of code later, we're hitting escape, we're destroying that button, but that button's ID is still in the hover button variable. That's a problem because now when we go to the draw event, we go to here, well, hover button's not equal to no one. We've got a number stored in there. So temp title equals hover button dot title. Wait a minute, there's no more hover button. I can't get title. That's what's going on. Oops, simple fix. Uh, I had a different simple fix, but now we're gonna go with the accidental simple fix that I already had. So let's go into with O button and destroy instead of that. And what I was initially gonna do, I was just gonna keep that and then I was gonna do hover button equals no one. I was gonna essentially retype what's going on here with just wipe buttons because wipe buttons well, it does all that for us, so why why mess around when we got something written up to do it already for us? So we've destroyed all the buttons. Now we've cleared out the data, defunct data that might exist. That's all done here in white buttons. Cool. Now let's test this one real quick. Let's go in, and I, I already know it works because we've seen it work. But we do have one more bug to find after this one. X a bunch of times. It does kill our... Hover information probably could find some way to fix that. It's really not that big of a deal, though. So now, last bug. Well, okay. Let's not get too cocky. This is the last bug I know of. There are probably more. It's pretty easy to rack up a lot of bugs when you're making a game in, in a turn-based strategy game. Again, you get a bunch of different parts all mashing themselves together to make this work, so... There's a lot of weird places for bugs to hide. So last bug that I know of, I'm going to end uh, Danny's turn, and I'm going to be watching, and when these targets flash, I'm going to hit escape. So and turn, confirm. I think I missed one, didn't I? No. Come on. There we go. Got it. Okay. Same basic kind of thing, except this time we're getting a negative four. So, O cursor, step normal event, line 45, if selected actor dot state equals begin action. And this negative four is popping up. What's the deal with that? I mean, all the other times we're getting a, what, a six digit number, like 100947, or something like that. This time we're getting negative four. That doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound like an ID game maker we'd give something. And it's not. It's an ID that we gave something. So no one pops up as negative four. I don't know why, because no one is also, like you're able to use it as a true false statement. But it works. And if it's stupid, but it works, then it isn't stupid. So essentially, this we have a piece of code in here that's assuming we have a selected actor. And on the enemy's turn, we don't have a selected actor. It's set to no one. So it's essentially trying to change the state of that no one keyword. And that no one keyword obviously doesn't have a state to mess with. So another pretty easy fix, our if statement in this block of code is broken. Let's get to that. Get back into our step. And it's the same line 40-ish block of code that's been causing us problems this whole time. So if selected actor state, begin action, this broke. But this broke because this is wrong. So keyboard check, press VK escape, we want that. And we're just gonna add something to this. We'll add and selected actor doesn't equal no one. So if it's our turn, if we have a selected actor, we'll do this stuff. Way to run, like if you're going whole, whole hog programming a turn-based strategy game, you probably want some sort of escape key menu or something like that, in which case you could have a different block of if keyboard check pressed and it's not your turn, you could pull up the menu. But we're not getting into that, so this is fine for now. So let's green check out of here, 
screen check out of there. We're going to run it one more time, and I'm going to mash the escape key like the dickens on the bad guy's turn. And we're set. I... Hmm. So I got this new keyboard because it was quieter. It typed quieter. It wouldn't be so loud when I'm doing these things or playing games and recording them. And it's... I have to do a lot of work to keep my keyboard quiet. And it's still... Because otherwise... Well, otherwise it sounds like it's a machine gun outside or something. It's ridiculous. So I get this nice quiet keyboard and there I was mashing the escape key. And I can't feel that some of you guys might have missed out on the experience. Anyway. Error didn't work. Or the air didn't throw. Everything's fine. We fixed the errors we stepped out to do. And I've talked about how I went about looking for and finding those errors and what was causing them. And maybe give you guys a few more tools in your arsenal to fix your own errors. Now let's give you one last tool in your arsenal to help fix errors. Let's go to my YouTube page and let's take a look at the things that Demo TKS has written. Because like I said, he gave me some pretty good error reports here. So, and I'm just going to read this real quick. Everything works the same for me as it does for you. I tested it the same way and so on. The one problem I have is that the game will crash if I hit escape before pressing X. I double check the code that checks the confirm button and even tested instance exists. I still receive the same error. Did you notice this error in one of your versions or is it just me? I normally can find the issue using the information from the error message, but this one has me confused. Here's the error message. I used underscores instead of camel case and unit instead of actor. I don't know why these two changes appeal to me, but they do. Past experience, I guess. So, what Demo has done is he has perfectly laid out the problem. One problem I have is the game will crash if I press escape before pressing X. That's great. I know exactly how this is crashing, so it's easy for me to replicate the crash. But that's not all Demo did. Demo then went on, like he went above and be He, oh gosh, Demo might be a girl. They then went above and beyond and I double checked the code that checks the confirm button and even tested instance exist. Demo did a couple of possible solutions. Those solutions didn't work. I have more information to go on. So that's not an avenue of approach that will work for me. I'll try something else. And then Demo posted the error report, which let me take a good look at things before I even got into the game. I outlined the whole thing here. If you, anybody really cares, you can go read what I had initially said to Demo. And then Demo came back with two more errors. Thanks for the response. That fixed the problem, but I noticed a few more after making that change. The first crash happened right when the game starts. If you hover the button, of, if you hover, hover, of, hover over the button and click escape, you get this error. Gave me the error report. The other errors are kind of a mystery to me at the moment. It happens for me spamming escape. I think it's happening on the target's turn. My guess is they are maybe lacking certain variables our actors have. Again, really good bug reporting. Told me exactly what causes the error. Hovering over button, hit escape, get this error, included the error report. Awesome. The other one he temp, uh, demo didn't give me an error, error report for, but told me how to get the error report. And demo, I guess, was just like hardcore spamming that escape key and didn't even know it was the uh, target's turn or not. But it gave me something to go on. And my initial thought process here, and I was I was on the way to surgery for that one, so I didn't get a, get back to demo for... Maybe it was just a couple hours. I thought it was like a whole day. Anyway, so what I did for the second one, the first thing I did was, do, do our targets have the same variables as our actors do? Oh, hold on, let's check. And event inherited. Great, so that was one solution, wasn't a right one, but it gave me something to go on. So if you guys are ever working on someone else's game or working with a team, you should think about coming and take, just take a good look at these. And I've, I guess I've, I've read them, but these are really good error reporting. Really good. Anyway, that's it for bug reporting. I, I hope I've helped some people out in the future, maybe given you guys something more to go on for programming on your own, finding your own errors and sort of a process of elimination error reporting kind of thing. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.